Good morning. Today, a short lesson concerning the ornaments in the French music by François Couperin. We will follow the, 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 the table, the résumé for these, uh, of these uh, ornaments, and then we will try to speak about Le Rossignol en Amour, a very ornamented, flourished piece. Explication des agréments et des signes, explanation or, yeah, translation of ornaments and signs. The first is pensée simple. Mordant, uh, I don't know the English name, mordente in, in Italian. Uh, it's, uh, it's not clear if Couperin think about these ornaments when it is in uh, the first note is on the beat or the third. It's a problem with uh, pensé, with the mordente. Uh, and then it's interesting because it holds c'est la valeur des notes qui doit déterminer la durée des pensées, des portes de voix et des tremblements. On doit entendre par le mot de durée le plus ou le moins de battements ou vibrations. It, it is the, the, the value, the length of the note. Uh, that's uh, it's important for the length of this uh, agreement and uh, what is the length for an, an, or, um, an ornaments how many time you make this movement Be -do -de -do -de -do -de -do. so it is short you make just one time it is long And in the sample that they meet, pensée double, okay. Then we have the the signe pour le renvoi des reprises, mais ça c'est this is not ornaments, there is where you have to start again the piece, it's just a graphical solution. We have porte de voix simple. Porte de voix is appoggiatura of Italian. Uh, it's strange that he, he, he told simple when it's not simple. Simple is simple. Uh, and when it is really simple, so on just a normal appoggiatura, the Couperin write port de voix coulé. Coulé, I don't know what English is, like water, like uh, tears of, of your eyes. I start with the port de voix coulé. We have the this four note and with the port de voix coulé We don't know what is the length exact of the appoggiatura because for understanding the, le the length of an appoggiatura we have to consider what arrives after. If there is a rest or there is uh, another note or words. Uh, I have listened many performances specialized in Baroque music that they made short appoggiatura in Couperin. Attention that there is in the beat, eh? on the beat. The porte de voix appoggiatura coulé, uh, simple, is with, an, um, with a pensée, with a mordente. And uh, porte de voix double, when the note is very long, you will do many do di do di do many movement. Okay. 
Couperin don't tell us does doesn't tell us how many has to be the length of the first note. But we have many samples from Bach, from Handel, from other composer. Uh, normally an appoggiatura take half of the note if the note is pair like two, four, eight, and uh, two thirds or four fifths if the note is unpaired. Tremblement appuyé. It's strange, it don't make tremblement normal. Probably the tremblement that we call normal is the tremblement détaché. I play for you the tremblement détaché. Remember, when you have to learn an, an ornament, it's better that before you play the melody without. Because the melody without ornaments need to be very clear, very stark, very sure. And after with ornament. It's strange, but this is the Volta from Bird. But uh, this is Coupera. So this was the four note, and now with tremblement détaché for the soprano recorder and not easy the tremblement upon the D. Okay, this is what we normally call trillo, normale. And uh, Couperin called tremblement, that is trill, détaché, not, uh, not tied, not lié, not uh, legato. Then we have the tremblement appuyé et lié. Pouf! Appuyé, I think it is that the first note it's written. The tremblement upon D, the first note is E. And lié, so you have not to make two time E, E. So there is in two half notes, this is the tempo. Yes, it could be, it could be that in this case the, the trill start after the second beat. It could be that the trill end in the second beat. But Couperin don't tell us too much. Tremblement lié sans être appuyé. Pouf. I don't know what it means, but uh, it seems that there is a tremblement without head. So not E, E, D, E, D, E, D, C, but E, E, D, E, D, D, C. The same, it could be that the tremblement end in the second beat. Important the difference between lié and détaché. Okay, then Couperin speaks to us tremblement ouvert. There is a tremblement. Uh, normally we call this mesure and ferme when the the last two notes C D go down. But ferme e over it's not really a difference in the ornaments, it's a difference in where it's finished. Then you have an unusual ornaments, axam. There is a note after a long note, at the end of a long note, and before something that happened after. The three note was 
and this is the ornament. So not this is not just at the end. T lié. Then Couperin speak about uh, arpège. There is not interesting for flute. About diesis and bemol. This is it's evident. And then they told us that there is some pensée continue, so on more down, very long. That's, I think it's very unusual. I don't remember a more down continue. And surely a long tremblement, tremblement continue, pas continue, continue. This I know better, Bach use it. Then it's interesting, probably for recorder player, but special for keyboard player, when you have to note with this scene, tierce coulé, that is montant, going up, descend down, going down. Then there is aspiration, there is a strange agreement, there is a note shorter. But it's strange. In the translation from Couperin, it's shorter, very few, just a double crochet, a sixteenth. And a scene very interesting, the suspension, this is very elegant, but I think just Couperin use it. I think that Bach never use it. The text was And Couperin suggests to play I think it is important with the harpsichord because when you do this argument with harpsichord the effect will be very very important. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, I don't find here I don't find here I the tierce coulé but we will find it in the Le Rossignol en Amour. Uh, as I told you before, it's very important that you play the melody without agreement, without ornaments. etc. Before the ornaments we have to speak about the 16th, the double crochet, I think it's the name, double crochet, that they are inegal. Inegal that is one is shorter, one is longer, one is more clear, one is less clear, one is more important, one is less important, and then normally in the crochet we use this pronunciation in the recorder, this tonguing turu, 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 why tu is stark and clear and ru is a little less. Uh, we start with the, this sixth note. There is two way for making this inegal. Turu, 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 other. I fear that in the old, in the ancient treatise method, it was written to rule, diddle, diggle, um, all many, many things, because there was not really speaking as me here. The, 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 the author try away for explain something with word. But I guess that you can make all in a gal just with two. Uh, there is many many different way of making two and so I guess that you can use turu 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 or tu 
to do, to do, or to, 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 to. It depends for what you are trying to make. The question is this, with some people, the air, ru, it's more stark. And this is a great mistake. Okay. I guess that the musical theory told us that we make inegal note when the notes are near, like in a scale. And not when the notes are distant, like in arpeggio. So in this case, we have some notes that are near each other, F, G, A, B, A, G, F, E. Okay, but G, E and E, A are not near. So it could be that we make inegal all or that we, we avoid inegality between G, A, G, E and A. These are finesse. It's uh, your choice. First agreement is a mordente. The name from Couperin is uh, pincé. With the legatura. Poof. What means that's legatura? That we have to start on the beat or before? Uh, normally it's very, very usual to make, it's more natural to make mordente, so pincé, before um, but I I think that in the third bar it's more better to be in the beat on the beat than before. The difference is minimum, it's very, just pre quite a psychological difference. So, but it's better to try to make perfect ornaments. So we can do this, we will make a mordente on the beat, pom parara pom, and not pom parara, just an opinion. Uh, the first ornament is easy, the second a little less easy. There is a pincé, so a mordente, but with appoggiatura. E, F, E, F. It could be with a long E or The second line F D there is an E between F and E. I interpret this uh, like coulé because it's very difficult to make an appoggiatura. The name of appoggiatura is port de voix. In a note there is not on the beat. The beat is F A rest F. A rest. So it's very difficult to make, not impossible, but dif difficult. I th think that this is a tierce coulet. So like an acciaccatura. Okay, I will play the first part. Oh, I'm 
sorry, there is no rest, there is just two breaths. What is C flat? It's not C flat. This flat uh, cancel the, the sharp. It was C, C sharp with this flat is C normal. And then we have an B with flatement, with, uh, what is the name? With tremblement, but lié. So we have not to make C, C, B, C, B, but C. I guess when you have descending note, descending note, go down note, with the lié legato and uh, uh, tremblement, the tremblement and where the note is written. I will play very slow. It's just an opinion, effect from my experience. So when I play with the normal speed, Because to start after the beat, how theoretical is uh, the rule, it's very quite impossible. The, when I play with the normal speed, it's just something that happened to too late. Second part. Accent plant plaintif. There is a, a in a way of something of crying. Uh, the Rossignol don't cry, doesn't cry, but there is something neoromantic. When in music you have to make four times the same things, the same thing, it's better that you don't make exactly the same. Or the people will think, well, what happened? Body, 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 body is boring. Uh, so try to make two, three, with long note, with short note. Try to make four different tremble, uh, pensées. Then this is perfect for inégal. And then petite reprise. This is very interesting. The composer right i speak in american 16 32 and 64th okay but he wrote augmenté par gradation imperceptible uh, change your speed in a way gradually not for 8 60 but tiri 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 don't don't be uh, don't worry to make more or many notes as it is written
but it is not easy at all because you cannot lose your time you're not really free like a rossignol like neck like this bird but um, there is a bus above Pom, ping, ping, pom, ping, ping, pom. It's not easy to follow, not to follow, but to be sure when this part has to end it. Because the apricot cannot make pom at the end, pom, ping, ping, and then white. It is not easy, flute and harp score, but it is not easy, harp score himself, because it's unusual. To go with an hand out of time and the second hand in the time. And at the end, uh, Couperin asks Piri Piri Bing mm, in the double, but I think it's better also here. We can make without mm, I think it's better when you do this gruppetto and it was a gruppetto yeah gruppetto is called double in Couperin uh, in this uh, sample double and then we have this uh, legato Okay, after this we have a double. It's not really a double because there is not all 16 uh, double quarter or yeah, not a double crochet, double quarter, triple quarter. Uh, but there is just more ornamented. It is very interesting for us. There is ornamented written in scenes and ornamented written in notes. And now these three notes C B C D C B C we make before on in the tact in the beat or I think it's better the first solution, like triple appoggiatura. Para para pa, para para pa, but just an opinion. This is not easy. It seems that all these notes are legato and between E and C. The, the gruppetto that Couperin named double is between D and E after the ornaments of D. Poof, not easy this double. This is just an opinion. It's a Mozart that make the the gruppetto in this way. I play this bar very slow. Okay.
I make the mordent in the beat. Parava pam parava pam parava and not pom parara pam parara pam parara. Why? Because when I have a long pensé, pensé double, like in the second bar, these must surely be in, in, in the, on the beat, because it cannot be long when it is before. Uh. So, I guess they're all as on the beat. And now the petite reprise is not impossible but quite because Couperin suggests us to us to make a mordente, a pensée, but with the, this piu 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 piu, this piu 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 with mordente, piu 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 rdu. I play very slow. It's very difficult to make an accelerando with all these fingers that have to move. I fear, and Couperin suggests also, that in the more fast part there is no more pensé, no more mordente. So. can try all your life for making perfect this. I, I don't know if I ever played this perfect because it's very very difficult to make this accelerando and then you have to follow the bass and then you have to make mordente and to stop the mordente in a way not so abrupt. It's not good when you make The change is too evident. You have to try to make something more. And then at the end, this is very interesting. Before the beat, on the beat, and then the D was uh, dotted quarter, so the B I B is just a sixteen. Not easy. I play all this part. Uh, Couperin told us we have not to follow the beat too too much, you are free. But the question is, it speaks about one man that played two with two hands. But if you play with an harp score, it's very difficult to be free together because each has its own idea of freedom. Okay, I hope it's useful for you. Bye bye.